For the seventh edition of FIMO 228, Togo's International Fashion Festival, 32 stylists had the chance to present their latest collections to the world. But beyond the obvious matter of the clothes, fabrics and design, what purpose does an event like this actually serve? Guadeloupian Paris-based menswear designer Fauvet Necto has an answer. It's the perfect space for meetings, exchanges, but it's not necessarily great for actually selling things. I often find that people only get in touch once I've returned home. What you're really here to do is cultivate your image. That's what's on show. You need to show what you can do. And Jacques Logo, founder of the festival, would agree. He's also a designer and is using his platform to present a simple, fluid collection. But he also has an important message to deliver, and it's more to do with politics and economics than aesthetics. Cotton is produced here, but Togo doesn't yet process cotton, which means that all the fabric production is done in Europe. They produce the material over there, and then they bring it back to us here. Right now, it's not easy to get good quality materials here in Lomé. So I'm going to ask the government, or anyone who's interested, to create a fabric factory to be able to process Togolese cotton here in Togo, so that these designers can have easy access to our own fabrics. Burkina Faso has their own fabrics. It's the same in Ghana or Ivory Coast. But in Lomé, we're not making any fabrics destined for the Togolese market. That has to change. The government needs to understand that our designers and the country as a whole identifies with local fabric. I'm launching an appeal to everyone who loves fashion. We need to do something. The current situation means that designers based in Lomé have to carry out regular trips to neighbouring countries to stock up on fabrics. That means wasting time and, of course, money. But that hasn't dampened the enthusiasm of young designer Ajiwanu Hawande. Today, women have to fight a lot of battles. There's a lot of stress, there are so many things to manage. I wanted to remind people, us, women, that we have this feminine side. And it's easy to forget. But yes, we need a certain lightness. We need to have fun. We need to look for the positives in life. So I make clothes I hope will inspire women to relax more, to have more fun. The festival's standout event was a huge fashion show, organized in the gardens of a luxury hotel. The 2,000 tickets on offer were snapped up in just a few hours. But the night before, it was a very different affair, with a fashion show spilling out onto the streets of the city. The event, free and open to all, was organized by UN AIDS, the United Nations AIDS Prevention Programme, a partner of the festival. Male and female condoms were handed out to the crowds. <laughs> Yes, it's important. You need to protect yourself. And this is an event, a fashion show, which means there are people here. It's a good place to give out condoms. Is AIDS a big problem here in Togo? It's been a problem for quite a while now. It is a big problem. And that's why the theme of today's show is the fight against AIDS. I think it's a great initiative. And do you think that men and women are equally aware of the problem? I think women are more aware. As far as I know, it's the women. I can't speak for the men, though. You're going to give them out to everyone here? Yes, to everyone. At least we'll offer them to everyone. The intention is to give them out to everyone, but there may be some who say no. 
Do you think that giving them out freely destigmatizes it? Everyone in the FEMO team agreed that it would be a good idea to raise awareness, to make young people think about the need to protect themselves. It's not yet really part of our mentality. They say they're ashamed even to buy condoms in a shop. So we thought we should hand them round so they get familiar with them. It doesn't make sense not to act. FEMO228, proof that fashion can be both fun and informative. Togo's International Fashion Festival is about beautiful clothes, but it's also about giving the country's youth a chance at a brighter and healthier future. À Abidjan, nos observateurs sont des témoins privilégiés de la transformation de la ville. Souleymana Sanogo dénonce la destruction des quartiers précaires balayés par l'urbanisation galopante. À l'université, Yannick Kofi et ses camarades déplorent leurs conditions d'études souvent difficiles. Quant à Philippe Cabella, il célèbre chaque jour en image le dynamisme de la capitale économique ivoirienne. The Observers Direct, on France 24 and France24.com.